the Philippines has actually uh, used that to our advantage way ahead of time. The uh, conglomerates actually started to uh, position themselves, take a look at what are the opportunities uh, that they can have, not only for the Philippines, but for ASEAN. A couple of years back, uh, one conglomerate head and I were taking a look at uh, what products can they uh, bring over. And not to the Philippines, but to the 630 million population of uh, the ASEAN. And uh, as uh, the Philippines uh, is uh, the chairman, uh, of course we have to be proud that uh, we're chairing uh, the ASEAN. President Duterte actually visited all uh, the ASEAN member countries. Within his first year in office, Within yes. his first year in office. And uh, I'm definitely sure he understands uh, what uh, all the concerns and uh, issues is all about. And actually, it's also very encouraging because uh, not only are there expectations of uh, investments coming into the Philippines, but a lot of our companies are also looking at the 630 uh, million population of uh, the ASEAN. And in fact, that's exactly what you were talking about in a briefing yesterday. You said uh, Philippine companies are looking to tap overseas markets now. Who are they and uh, where do they want to go? I can't mention names, but uh, it's very easy. They take a look at what their areas of uh, focus are in the country and try to expand it overseas. So if they're in retail in the country, they try to take a look at opportunities in country that has got almost the same demographics as the Philippines. They try to understand the buying patterns. If they're in manufacturing, they take a look at what are the key interests. If they're in food, they take a look at uh, uh, how their food uh, will be uh, taken by our uh, ASEAN neighbors. And uh, that is very encouraging because it used to be one way. It used to be how can we attract uh, foreign, uh, investors. foreign investors into the country. But it's also very interesting to see how we try to uh, bring them uh, also to uh, opportunities outside. Wick, you've also been quite uh, vocal about uh, infrastructure. I mean, when we talk, when you look at the potential opportunity in infrastructure, we have to talk about the China's One Belt, One Road initiative, which Beijing has already set aside an initial $40 billion for. What is the opportunity there for a country like the Philippines? And are we pushing hard enough to capitalize on it? I think it's very clear. The government is uh, capitalizing on the opportunities of One Belt, One Road. We've normalized our relationship with China. Take a look at the Philippines, 62% of our GDP. Uh, runs 150 kilometers from the peripherals of uh, Metro Manila. What we are trying to build is infrastructure. Infrastructure to allow bridges, uh, to allow roads, to allow telecommunications. Can you imagine? You have 101 million Filipinos. Uh, growth rate of 2.5%. Uh, uh, an average age of 23. There will always be an opportunity for you to have a uh, home, Food, water, medical, telecommunication, education, and one belt, one road. Uh, if you've uh, seen what uh, the government has uh, uh, said a while ago, uh, they've uh, actually had some uh, projects already earmarked. This uh, South uh, uh, Luzon Rail, they have this uh, Chico uh, Irrigation uh, the Chico River uh, yeah. project. Those are very great. Can you imagine the trickle-down effect? And that's what we are excited about in HSBC. Because it is not the financing that you just have to take a look at. If you take a look at rail, rail will have a lot of components. Rail will have steel, will have cement, will have a lot of things correlated. And all you need to do is to make sure you identify all of those companies that are related into all of this. And what we do is we cover 90% of the world's GDP. HSBC is in 71 countries and territories around the world. We ask our customers, these are the opportunities in the country. How would you like to take advantage and be able to participate in this opportunity that we have in the country? As we call it, the stars have aligned. <laughs> You have a good opportunity in ASEAN, one belt, one road. You have a, you know, a, uh, a leadership that is bent on ensuring that uh, we capture all of these opportunities. You have the tax reform uh, program, uh, uh, you know. Uh, that is still being, being debated in Senate. Being debated, but uh, as the finance secretary said, it's a patriotic act. I'm very uh, optimistic that uh, this will uh, get passed. It's a very fair and equitable uh, uh, tax uh, system. We are confident with our uh, new uh, Banco Central ng Pilipinas governor who's going to, he said, 
it's a continuity plus plus or continuity one of the things that you need to ensure of you bring capital you have one belt one road uh, investors is for infrastructure you have ASEAN you have to make sure that the local economy will and uh, the banking uh, we'll see through the projects community yeah. will be able to handle it you need to make sure that uh, you have a stable interest rate regime he's further enhancing uh, and liberalizing the foreign exchange uh, market he's actually allowed more foreign banks to transfer more technology and to provide right. competition to the rest okay competition makes everyone good we're gonna get to that foreign banks in just a little bit but I want to know in terms of financing the infrastructure push where do you sit on the debate over whether the government should resort to external borrowing and I think the worry there is that we might be subject to you know predatory interest rates or uh, harsh concessions for instance the government has uh, already mentioned that the one of their uh, priorities uh, uh, overseas developmental assistance funds and these are very very soft loans I'm definitely sure they are going to be able to see the numbers and be able to put together a uh, very strategic borrowing program that will be good for the country they will see the numbers they're not going to compromise our future let's talk about uh, HSBC's actual performance week um, you know the global the group has, has just posted uh, Q2 numbers and it's looking pretty good the turnaround, the sense is that in the markets that HSBC's turnaround story is finally taking root. How does the Philippines play into that? What's the narrative for the local unit? The Philippines is actually uh, a major uh, conduit between our uh, customers from around the world. As I mentioned earlier, we cover 90% of uh, uh, the world's uh, GDP. And uh, we allow foreign investors. We are the ones who sell the Philippines. We show uh, what uh, we have in the country. HSBC in the Philippines custodies $50 billion worth of equities and securities from investors around the world. We share the Philippine story. We share the good news that's going into the country. We cater to the retail market. We allow the commercial banking. So if you're a corporate account, we allow you to grow. We allow you to expand overseas. And if you allow, expand overseas, uh, eventually we also manage the private banking uh, requirements of uh, this customer. So it's a complete strategy of making sure that the international connectivity of HSBC place well into the retail, commercial banking, global banking, and the private banking franchise that we have. Well, as you alluded to earlier, the Bank of Central is, you know, uh, working over time to liberalize the financial industry. Um, it's already, you know, last we counted, they've approved nine banks, nine foreign players to enter the country over the last two years. How does that change your strategy here? Uh, we always have a niche business. You need to be able to focus on niche business. Uh, Japanese banks will have uh, their own customers. We have our own uh, trade customers. We have our own custody business. We have our own large uh, local corporate uh, aspirations that uh, we try to assist. So all of these things come into play. And uh, as I, I've mentioned earlier, the competition actually makes uh, everyone strong. So no worries there at all. No worries. Um, you talked about, uh, you sound really bullish about the economic prospects, and in fact, HSBC pegs uh, Philippine growth this year to be at about 6.5% uh, as well for next year. Here we've got the numbers right in front of us, uh, which is more or less in line with what the other institutions have said. Where is the driver going to be? Consumerism. The consumer demand, uh, the demographic sweet spot of the country is actually very, very interesting. As a matter of fact, uh, it is one of the key motivators for uh, industry uh, to grow and for investors to come in. And what uh, we're excited about more is inf if infrastructure starts to kick in. You can just imagine the kind of growth and opportunity that we have in the country, as I've said. The stars have aligned. Now is the best time to be the country. You have a government that is bent on collecting taxes. And uh, not only do they collect taxes, those uh, errands are put uh, uh, to justice. We are not immune to external risks, though. And in fact, that's one of the things that some of the analysts and economists have pointed out to us. As you look across the landscape, what's standing out as a biggest risk for you in terms of investor sentiment and markets? Is it Brexit? Is it the prospect of terrorism? Is it the unpredictability of U.S. policies? What's the biggest risk here? I, I think uh, the biggest risk uh, that we have right now is our inability to be able to communicate. <laughs> a lot of things actually are uh, a matter of uh, diplomacy. A lot of people talk about uh, the regional security. I think it's a matter of diplomacy. Uh, um, uh, 
you know, U.S. interest rates, they say, are going to move up. Uh, definitely sure it is not going to go at levels that are going to be uh, alarming. And uh, I'm definitely sure that it is already factored in, uh, factored in the market. And when you say uh, communication, do you mean the way that the, communica the Philippines communicates to no, the outside no. world? No, the rest of the world gets to communicate. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Fair Insights. Wick Veloso, CEO, HSBC Philippines. Thanks very much for your time today.